Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 666. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 661 to 671. Wow, all of these videos in this workbook are all about the aggregate function, a new function in Excel 2010. Better than this subtotal. Subtotal only, only has 11 functions. This one has 19 functions. 14 to 19 are, are, can be handle arrays. 13 to 11 cannot. And then all these great options. And we've already done a bunch of videos in this series uh, looking at all of those options. Now in this one we want to look at our first uh, array. That means one of the functions between 14 and 19. Now in the first example I just want to do a simple one. I want to do the large 3. Now really we could just use large 3 equals large. And what does large do? It looks through this whole array there. And if you comma and tell it the K3, it picks out the third biggest. Not the maximum, but the third biggest. Now just to see how the aggregate works, we'll do that same calculation. Aggregate and we have to scroll down, large. That's the function number. And now this is the first time we're going to be using this one here. Um, everything we've done so far is this one. So option, comma. And what's great, right, even though we have the large, the large can't uh, you know, ignore hidden rows or errors or nested subtotals. But for this first one, we're just going to say nothing, just to keep it simple, and then this. This will give us the exact same number uh, as the large. I did something wrong there. I forgot the array, so I'm going to type a comma. That argument is the k, which is that 3. And then I'm going to click right there and highlight this little data set. We get the same value. Now, let's see how to um, do a real array. And this aggregate. Aggregate is one of a number of functions that can handle arrays. As soon as you see an argument that says array in it, like lookup function, sum product, index, and now aggregate, it will handle arrays and you don't have to do control shift enter. All right, so our what we want to accomplish here is we want to find the largest, the third largest value for Sue, right? So that means we have a criteria. So no problem, we're going to come down here and do large. 14, comma, um, if we had any of these circumstances, we could use one of those, but we're just going to say ignore nothing. And then the array. Now, what do we have to do here? We have to create a uh, some sort of array that will isolate the values and only find this value, this value, and this value. None of the other ones. So we're going to have to build a little true-false here. In parentheses, I'm going to say, is anything in this column, control shift down arrow, and I'm going to hit, oh, I don't have to hit F4. Sorry about that. Anything in that column there equal to that? Close parentheses. Then actually, that gives us a bunch of trues and falses. If I highlight that and hit F9, you can see it gives us uh, three trues at the end. Now the rest are false. Control Z. And actually, we want to, in the numerator, put this whole column here. And then divide by. And all this is doing, so if we look here, what's 315 divided by false? Well, remember, in array formulas, Boolean math, Boolean logic, true times any number is that number, and any number times false is 0, because false is 0. But what is divide by? If we take, remember, this was trues and falses, and only the last three were true. So if we take this divided by 0, well, that's an error. Let's just see what happens um, when we calculate this. And then we're going to come back and take advantage of that second options argument. But we have to finish off this for, actually, let's just take a look. And then. F9. You can see we get a bunch of divide by zeros. Most, you know, array form is you, th you then have to do is number to get the numbers or something like that. Uh, control Z. No problem. We'll come back and deal with that options argument in just a moment. Let's finish this comma and our three because remember we're interested in the third biggest. 
Now I'm going to close parentheses and come back over here and highlight that 4 and type whichever number you want to pop this back up. And sure enough, what's the one we want? We probably want ignore error values. Now if you were hiding rows, you'd use that one. But I'm just going to double click that, and it puts the 6. And then I'm going to hit Enter. Now think about that. I hit Enter. I don't see any curly brackets. There was no Control-Shift-Enter. And we had two things going on here. We had an array right there, which usually requires Control-Shift-Enter. and so the aggregate function A allowed us to put an array in, and B, all we had to do is change this options to avoid errors, um, just makes uh, this formula here a lot easier. Now, uh, now let's see how we used to do this calculation before we had aggregate. We will use the large, and we'd have to use the if function. And we have just uh, one criteria here. So we click in the sales rep column, highlight that column. Anytime that is equal to Sue, what do we want? The value if true, uh, this column right here. Close parentheses on the if. Now that's our array, comma, and then the K. The K, we just click right there and then Enter. Now notice. Um, we talked a little bit earlier in this video about how awesome aggregate is, because, or just a moment ago, because it's got an array. But notice, that's an array. How come that didn't work? The reason why is that right there. That doesn't say array. So that is a way sometimes people get confused when, they're do, when to use Control-Shift-Enter and when not to. But this argument has an array going in there, and that argument in the if function is expecting only a single true or false. So here we have to use Control Shift Enter. You can see we get the same answer. If I change this to 2, we get that answer. If I change this to Galt, you can see we get this answer. So I just absolutely love this new aggregate uh, handle arrays, um, even though I think I've done this kind of formula with standard deviation and statistics, max, min, median, so many times. I can do it in my sleep. I still kind of like this because you don't have to do uh, Control Shift Enter. All right, when we come back, we'll see some uh, successively more complicated array formulas that the aggregate can handle. All right, see you next video.